With us now, Republican from Michigan who wants to be a senator. His name is John James. He's got his work cut out for him. He trails in all the polling we have seen. But thank you for coming back today. I just give us a sense for how the Kavanaugh story is playing in your part of the country. Well, uh, in Michigan, uh, again, folks are uh, are paying attention. But what folks are really concerned with in Michigan is is making sure that uh, everybody has access to the American dream. As far as the Kavanaugh proceedings are going specifically, uh, you made the comment, I believe, in the in the last uh, before the last break about the goalposts being heavy. Um, uh, Democrats asked for a hearing, got the hearing. Asked for investigation, got the investigation. I'm really looking forward uh, to getting the, uh, the results of this investigation, conducting the vote, and uh, making sure we confirm a rule of law justice. What do you do uh, if, you, if you get where you're trying to go and you see the way the American people are looking on at what's happening with the U.S. Senate? What are you promising the American people? How do you change things? I promise that I will lead in Washington the way I led in Baghdad. I didn't fight for Democrats or Republicans. I fought for Americans when I was at war. I think that most people in the state of Michigan and most people around the country are sick and tired of the partisanship. We need more leadership in Washington. And my opponent, Debbie Stabenow, is the face of partisan politics. She votes with her party along party lines greater than 90 percent of the time. We need and we deserve better in Washington representing all of our interests, all Michiganders. And uh, people talk about this blue wave, but there's an undercurrent in Michigan of voters who feel disenchanted and disenfranchised because they feel like folks like Debbie Stabenow with her $900,000 house in Washington is a part of the swamp that does not represent them. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to representing all Michiganders and all Americans uh, because we deserve better than a 43-year career politician who spent 18 years in Washington and only gotten five bills passed into law. We need to get more economic opportunity in Washington because I have a business background and understand how to do business. And we also need to get a combat veteran in Washington who will take care of our veterans. For you to beat here, it would be quite an upset. Stabenow's got a lead and she's well known as, as I, I, know you're, I know you're well aware. I just want to bring you this news on Kavanaugh now because it's changing by the hour. Uh, Fox News mm -hmm. has learned now that the FBI has concluded its interview with Mark Judge. That's the high school friend of Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, per Judge's attorney, they will not be commenting the questions the judge was asked. To come back to this Kavanaugh issue, do you believe this is incentive for Republicans or is it more incentive for Democrats or do you think it's a push in the end with midterms five weeks well, away? The, the stakes are very high on both sides. Um, I believe that um, there's a real sense in the, uh, in the Republican Party of folks who I talk to um, who feel like if Republicans can't get a rule of law justice through with a majority in the Senate, then, then why are we supporting you? And uh, the Democrats I talk to um, really um, feel like the, the way they get their uh, progressive agenda through is through activist justices and judges on the bench. Uh, the stakes are high for both sides and, uh, and, and this is part of what uh, people are very saddened about is that uh, people are putting politics before individuals in their states. I'm looking forward to representing my state fairly and uh, fighting for all Americans, not just the Republican or Democrats. What is your forecast? I mean, how, are, how are things looking for your party, for Republicans, as we head ever more closer to the uh, to the midterm elections well we need every single vote but see the thing is uh, we're the, the polls are closing and this race is in play uh, with my candidacy President Trump even acknowledged that some Democrats uh, seats Senate seats that have been complacent uh, need to start paying attention uh, we're going to be able to sprint through the finish we need every single vote so please go to John James for Senate.com we do believe that we'll be able to close this gap and the numbers are showing it so I'm excited to keep you all posted throughout the process with the auto industry there in Michigan what do you think the effect of this agreement is with Canada and Mexico. Oh, great. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a thousand page document and people are still reviewing it. But the initial sentiments is we need to make sure uh, that we continue this. It's great for our, our labor, uh, making sure that we get uh, better jobs, closed loopholes, better wages and better benefits. But for businesses, uh, whether it's agriculture, opening additional markets for competition, particularly in the dairy industry in Michigan, which is very important, opening additional markets for free and fair trade. But for the automotive industry, having a longer planning horizon to make sure that we don't decimate the supply chains to make sure that we have uh, freer and fairer trade, uh, having the longer planning time horizon is great for automotive businesses. I'm an automotive supplier in Detroit and I understand manufacturing and I'm looking forward to advocating for all industries uh, and, and especially manufacturing the automotive industry when I get to Washington next year. And of course you are challenging the incumbent Senator Debbie Stabenow. I want to make it clear that we 
invited her on the program, and she has not gotten back to us, uh, but we did invite her. Uh, if you could just kind of leave us off with final thoughts. Uh, you know, the Midwest is going to play such a huge role here. What can you huge do? You're, you're touting yourself as obviously a veteran, but also uh, as a businessman. What can you do for the economy in that state? Well, I believe that creating a regulatory environment uh, and a taxation environment that makes it uh, pro-business for Michigan. See, everybody talks about how jobs are going to Mexico and to China, but if you're in Michigan, people forget that we're also losing jobs to Tennessee and Texas. We're also competing for jobs from Georgia and South Carolina, areas that recognize that we need to bridge the gap to create economic opportunity for people in our states. And the best way to do that is to create a pro-business environment. And so we can drive talent and technology and capital investment back to the state of Michigan to cure these blighted neighborhoods and to fix our broken schools and to make sure that we can uh, build on a future so everybody can participate in the American dream. Thanks for coming back here. Well, is Donald Trump going to come to Michigan and campaign for you? Do you know? Um, well, we've invited him, and uh, the president uh, was recognized how important Michigan is. And uh, if the president's coming, then uh, I'd love to show him around Detroit and Flint and areas that Debbie Stabenow's neglected for okay. decades. All right, he was in Tennessee, Mississippi later today. John James, thank you, sir, for coming Thanks back a lot. today. You bet.